Hey guys, Shop Shop here with a video on 10 things challenger players do that you don't. More specifically, some things that challenger players would be doing if put in your shoes in order to climb ELO. So yes, if you're looking to become a better player, this is definitely the video for you. In fact, I do loads of these kind of videos. So if you're looking to be the best player you can be, check out the playlist this video is in and you will be enlightened. And by enlightened, of course, I mean you might pick up a thing or two, but more likely be irritated by my British idioms and terrible sense of humour. So without any further ado, the first thing on our list of things that challenger players do that you don't is they avoid situations that put them behind. Good players know when they're vulnerable and they know how to avoid ganks, whether that's with good knowledge of an enemy's jungle routes, knowledge of the enemy's playstyle based on the champion they're playing, or just with good appropriate warding. They also know how to not get outplayed in a 1v1 situation. With good knowledge of their champion and the game in general, they can stop getting behind. And the reason why this is so crucial is because it's really hard to have an influence on the game when you are playing behind. And of course, how do you expect to carry and how do you expect to win if you don't have an appropriate amount of influence on the game you're playing? Our next point related to the first one is that challenger players when they get put behind are good at coming back into the game and often don't stay behind. They're usually very good at recognizing opportunities for themselves to exploit their opponent's weaknesses and claw back into the game. They can do this by waiting for the enemy to make a mistake and then capitalizing on that or taking advantage of more favorable situations in the future. To be honest, it's not always about what they do specifically, but more about how they carry themselves. A lot of it is a mental state. They don't give up when they get put behind. If you give up, then it's really, really hard for you to find these opportunities because you become very defeatist. Just because your enemy has a lead doesn't mean they suddenly turn into a god and that you can't fight them or you can't beat them. The next point is that good players will know of the best strategies and the best actions to take in order to give you the best chances of winning at any given time. What I mean by this is that challenger players don't need a midwife to tell them when it's a good time to push. They don't need anyone to tell them when it's a good time to group, to go for objectives, to go for team fights, to disengage, to poke, whatever it may be. Good players have a solid ability to be analytical in the way of thinking about the strengths and weaknesses of not only their team, but the enemy's team as well. By using that knowledge, you can see the kind of things you should be going for and likewise the kind of things you should be avoiding as well. The next point which is somewhat similar to the previous one is that good players will have quick decision making and will be wasting as little time as possible. By saying that people have quick decision making and that they don't waste time, it may sound like a bit of a redundancy, but there actually is two separate points to be tackled here. So firstly, you're welcome for the double whammy, and secondly, what I mean by this quick decision making is that it's not necessarily about making the right choice all the time. Challenger players obviously will be making the right choice a lot of the time, but really the more important point is doing things with conviction. Even if you don't make the right decision, if you dedicate to something, more often than not you will come off better than if you flake around and you're indecisive. Regarding the point about not wasting time, good players will know when it's a bad idea to go gank because it won't work. They'll know when it's a bad idea to group up because you'll lose the fight. So instead of trying these things with low success chances, they'll go and do something else that's more productive. The next point is about not just playing in the moment, but also with some foresight. Now it's not just rapid spinning Hitmonchans that get a lot of use out of foresight, being able to tackle current events while also planning ahead can be very beneficial in League of Legends as well. By thinking about what you're going to be doing in the future, you can actually avoid a lot of mistakes in the present. A really easy example of this would be something like you're going to hit level 6 in 2 minions and you know you'll have that level 6 advantage over your lane opponent, therefore you're going to focus on getting a bit more CS before trading. A slightly more advanced example could be something like running back to lane and saving your teleport because you know dragon's going to be respawning in 1 minute and your team has a superior dragon fighting team comp so you're going to need a way to get down there. The next point is that challenger players will often have a way of dealing with negative atmospheres in their team, things which would otherwise make them play a lot worse or go on tilt. Yeah, Yes, I'm talking about those infamous flaming teammates. Now, of course, challenger players are just people too. Far from your standard solo queue heroes enhanced by some kind of cyber initiative. Their hearts operate at far from sub-zero temperatures and there are sectors of incoming flame that just won't disappear in a puff of smoke. Never realm the less... Okay, sorry, I'll stop there. Nevertheless, mean words can be a bit hard to deal with, but it is crucial you find your own ways to cope with them. 
Whether that's simply sticking them on ignore, telling yourself you don't need to care about what these people think of you, or having some form of pity for them, it really doesn't matter as long as you don't let their words make you play worse. The next point is that challenger players will have very good executions during team fights. They tend to know what needs to be done and how the fight needs to be played in order to win it. Whether that's being on the lookout for certain abilities or perhaps baiting them, whether that's knowing how to focus, knowing who to focus, how hard to dedicate when you do go in, when to dip in and when to dip back out, etc etc. And as previously mentioned, they'll know what is a good fight to pick and what is a fight you should be avoiding. The next point is about knowing when to recall and when to not to recall. It's basically like a bit of a dumb point overall, but bad recalls are a really good way to fall behind. If you miss CS, not only are you missing gold, but you're also missing experience as well. Whereas on paper, a minion wave doesn't seem like a lot, they definitely add up and you only need to miss a few in order for you to miss the same amount as getting a kill. Good players will know when to stay for an extra wave, they'll know when to push before they recall and when to not push before they recall. And they'll also know when it's best to cut their losses, lose a few minions and recall, get some items and get some health, perhaps to avoid getting dove. A lot of lower league people have the bad habit of going black, which of course is the nickname I give to people who don't recall, because you know, once, once you go black, then you never go, you know, like, whatever, that's funny. Our penultimate point is the old classic of not blaming and not flaming. Now I don't want to paint every challenger player as an angel, that's certainly not the case, but it is an irrefutable truth that if you flame your teammates they will play worse, and if you blame your teammates then you won't learn as much. Honestly, I almost didn't put this point in because of how cliche and obvious it's become, it's almost a joke really in these kind of videos, but really in order to climb and improve, blaming is genuinely the worst thing you can do. Now, of course, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this here because this topic has been done to death a million times. But if you do struggle to control your frustrations, then uh, I have a video here to help you, which you can click on the screen now or check the link in the description. As we reach the last point in our list, I just want to say if you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching this video. If you did like it, don't forget you can put that thumbs up. And if you really liked it, I'll leave my address in the comments and you can like send me flowers or something. I don't really care. I mean, tulips are my favorite, but whatever. The last point I want to make here about the differences between challenger players and you is that challenger players play this game a hell of a lot. And it's not just about the volume of games played, but the quality time spent learning, improving. It is pretty bloody hard to get good at something you don't do frequently. And that probably does explain why I see a lot of first rate wankers in solo queue, but the point I want to make here is really about the more that you're playing the game, the more you're going to be learning. Although having said that, there can be a negative side to playing so much as well, if you're not spending a lot of quality time, like I mentioned in the beginning. It is pretty easy to go on tilt when you're exposed to that high volume of solo queue. And if you are a player who has a habit of doing that, then I've done a video to help you stop tilting, which I'll put a link to in the description. So that's all I want to say for this topic. Like I said a little while back, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like I said, you can give it a thumbs up. You can subscribe to me for more educational league content. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter, and catch me streaming on Twitch as well. All of those links are in the description, guys. I'd love to see your faces around some more. But most importantly, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in my next video.